Okay. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Akshaj, and thank you, Dan and Claire, for the amazing review session. And let's dive right into databases. So uh, before we get started, uh, just a quick thing I noticed in the past workshops. Uh, I know we're, we get fetch and get reset hard all the time. Uh, but one thing that might help to do before you do any of that is to just close out of any of these unsaved files with the little white circles. And the reason is because uh, it won't uh, reset those usually. So you wanna exit out of those. Uh, it doesn't matter if you save them or not, but once you do that, then things will be good. But okay, let's jump right in. So websites, websites, are worldwide. Anyone in the world can go onto a website, I guess. That's why they're so powerful. So here's a picture of the world. And we can have, I guess we're virtual today. And it's a good example of how you can be anywhere in the world and you can go onto the same website. So here we have three students in different parts of the world going onto capbook.com. And we call these the clients. Uh, the clients are you and your computer, uh, the user, the user is the client and uh, the client sees the front end code. So what's the front end code? The front end code is all the React stuff, the, uh, the HTML tags, the components, everything in React is front end. It's the code that you see. It's the code that is in front of you. That's why it's called the front end. Uh, and you can think of front end client, very similar things. But then there's this question of how do users communicate with each other? Like we just said that you can be across the world and see like someone in Australia can see my posts on Catbook. But how does that communication actually happen? Well, it happens through the server. So what's the server? It's like a central hub where uh, you can, uh, it's like this, central place where everything behind the scenes happens. So the code of the server is called the backend code. It's the code that's behind the scenes. And whenever you make get and post requests, it goes to the server. And then the server does all the stuff responding to the get post request and then returns it back to the client. So any information the client needs to display, like the stories, the comments, it will first go to the server, get the information and then come back to the client. So we did a little bit of this yesterday where we had our router.gets, our router.posts. What the server code is, is it's basically instructions on how to do things. So we tell it, how do you get all the stories? How well you send back this variable data.stories and that gets all the stories. And then we tell it, how do you make a new story? Well, you create a new story and then you add it to the array then you send it back. So once it has these, these instructions, uh, we actually had more requests, I think. So I think we had five different requests. Uh, but once it has these instructions, now our clients, the people on the website, can make any of these requests and our server knows how to respond to them. So the server is kind of like the brains. It, uh, has the instructions for how to respond to anything. So a little uh, diagram for how this works is a client could say, hey, get me all of the stories. And it goes to the server. The server somehow gets all the stories from wherever it stores its stories. And then it sends it back through your res.send. And then another client might want to make a new story. So it says post a new story. And then the server adds a new story wherever all the stories are stored. And then sends back done. Uh, we did all the stories. We added the new story to our list of stories wherever it is on the server. And then another client could ask for all the stories. And this time we send back the stories object with the new story that the second person added because 
he added it to our data source and then the service sent back all the stories. So now this third user can see the story that the second user posted on Kappa. And then maybe the first user refreshes his page and he now asks the server again, get me all the stories. And the first user now sees um, the stories from the second user, the story that the second user just added. So uh, for that diagram in code, uh, the front end, the client, uh, the push request looks like the above. We saw that yesterday where you wanna add a new comment. So you do a post request to API slash comment and you can add some inputs. And then in the back end, uh, we tell the back end how you respond to this post request. And this is in the api.js file. Uh, we create a new comment and we can refer to the inputs with this rec.body parameter. And then we can send back the new comment. Or we can add the comment to whatever data source and then we can send back the new comment. We don't actually have to send back the new comment because this is a post request, but we can if we want. And then similarly, we can have a get request where we can uh, get uh, all the comments with a specific parent. And then in the back end, we teach our back end how to respond to it. And with get requests, the input is rec.query. Uh, with push requests, the input is rec.body. With get requests, it's rec.query. And this is how you communicate between the front end and the back end. The same diagram from earlier. The client is the top and the server is the bottom. Okay, that's a little bit on uh, the how the front end and back end connect to each other. But now let's talk about databases. So again, here is a little demo. So our client is gonna make a new story and the text is new story. So in uh, workshop five, we add new story to wherever the stories are stored. And that is this constant right here in the server uh, titled data. So we add new story into this uh, object. So we add a new we add a new entry to the stories property of data. So yeah, that's where it's stored. Currently, all the data is stored in the server, specifically in that variable called data. Uh, but what's wrong with storing data in a server as a variable? Well, uh, I'm gonna demo what's wrong with it. So in this little demo, this client posts a new story and we see the stories variable gets updated to high. And then this other client posts a new story and the stories variable gets updated to high and hello. And then tragically, this is absolutely tragic. It might've happened to you before, but the, service, the server just dies. It runs out of battery, which whoever was hosting the server on their computer, they, their computer ran out of battery and this causes the server to go down. It happens, this happens in the real world. So that's okay. We just get our charger, we plug it back in and now our server is back up. The problem is because we started up the server again, this storage variable gets reset to the empty array. Uh, so that's a problem because we just lost all of our data. All the hi and hello posts are just gone. This is very sad. So yeah, that's a quick summary. Uh, if your server dies, you lose your data in this and in, in the model that we just have in workshop five. So I'm going to demo that real quick. Um, so let me pull up VS code. 
please don't follow along with this. Uh, so I'm going to, I have my workshop five. I checked out the workshop five and I got my server and hot loader running. So let's go to localhost 5000. I'm gonna make some posts. Hi, hello, testing. And then tragically, my computer dies and my server dies. So I just killed the server, but that's okay. I restart the server. And I refresh the page, but I lost my post. And you guys might have seen this when you were working on the workshop. If you refresh or you kill your terminal and restart, you lose your post. But we can't have that happen in a real web app. That would be terrible. So we need to store our data permanently somehow. Uh, one way to do this is uh, we can store it all in a text file. That's a good idea. Um, so how would that look? Um, we can write functions to read the data to a text file, write a data, write data to a text file. Uh, and I just implemented this real quick. You don't have to really pay attention to how I implemented it, but if you're curious, basically I added this write data to a file when you add a new story. And at the beginning of the server, we just read the data from the file. Not important, but I'm gonna demo it. So I have this branch. Uh, just you can just watch, but basically, we store all the data in this data.txt file. So these are the these are the stories I wrote, but I'm gonna make it empty. I'm gonna restart the server again. And then I have no post. So I'm going to make a new post. Um, one, two, three, four. Add a new comment. Hello. Actually, I don't know if comments been implemented yet, but um, as you can see, yeah, comments not implemented yet. But um, the stories appear in this text file. And now our computer tragically dies and we lose our server. I'm gonna kill the server, but we still have the text file. So we solved our problem. Our data is safe. So now we can restart our server, npm start. And we still have the text file. So I'm gonna go back. And we have our post still. Uh, we saved our data. Nice. Hooray, we fixed the problem. But there are more things that are wrong with this text approach. Uh, it doesn't address all of the issues. For example, uh, it's not that fast. Uh, you have to store the whole file every time. So imagine if you had thousands of files, thousands of stories on Catbook. It's slow. Uh, all the all the data is still on your computer because the text file is on your computer. So it's still a lot of memory. It's slow again because it's a text file. Hard to search through a giant text file. And someone can still like find the computer which the text file is on, take a baseball bat and swing through the computer and you lose all your data. I, I agree that if your computer runs out of battery, you still have it, but you can still destroy the laptop and you lose your data. You have not completely fixed the problem. And then there's this other problem of concurrency, which we didn't talk about, but 
what if two users post at the exact same time and they both try to edit the text file at the same time? Who gets to edit the text file first? You don't know. Like there's there's problems here where you might override each other's work. And so yeah, there's and there's more problems. Like these are just five of them. There are a lot more problems. So now we have to think about fixes to all of these issues. Uh, so rather than try to think of fixes to all these issues, they have actually already all been solved for us. Uh, someone already thought of all of these problems and made a better text file. And these are called databases. What's a database? Well, uh, there are these explanations here, but what you can think of it as is, is just a better data.txt, a better text file, a better place to put your data where it handles things like speed, concurrency, storage. It does it all for you. It's like a warehouse, a place to store all your stuff. Because imagine if you're running a store and you stored all of your inventory in the actual store, it'd be really cluttered. But instead you store your stuff in the warehouse and then when you need it, you go get it. So the DBMS the, uh, is basically your car when you have to go from your store to your warehouse. It's just the way you interact with the database. These, in the earlier example, it was the functions for reading and writing data. So how do you read from a database? Well, how it works is the server asks, so the server is like your store and the, your customer had just asked to buy something, but you're out of stock. So you tell the person who drives to the warehouse, give me all of the stories. And then this person goes over to the warehouse gets the story, it comes back to the store, the server. And how do you write to the database? How do you put items into the warehouse? You just put it into the warehouse. You, the server sends over this database management system and says, put the new story into the database. And it goes to the warehouse, puts it in and comes back. So uh, these data database management systems, they usually, they usually let you do a bunch of different um, commands. They let you read from the database. Usually you might wanna get all of the stories. They let you read with a query. So sometimes you might only want one specific story. You might only want the stories by a specific author. You might only want the short stories. And usually uh, there will be ways to do this in whatever database management system you use. You might want to write to the database. You might want to add a story into the database. And there's ways to do that. You might want to delete things in the database. Or you might want to modify things in the database. And all of these systems, they'll have ways to do it. Uh, this is not how the actual code will look like. But you can think of it as, this is what it's doing. So there are a lot of different types of databases. Um, but what we're going to use is MongoDB. MongoDB is uh, it's a database that stores things in JavaScript objects. And we know about JavaScript objects. So it's very convenient. Uh, I hope you guys did the setup. Uh, there's a MongoDB setup thing in, uh, someone's gonna link it in the chat or the question stock, but it was part of homework one. If you didn't, you can do it during lunch. You don't have to do it yet, but you need to do it before the database workshop, which is after lunch. Uh, but okay, how does MongoDB work? 
uh, basically you have your database. It's just a database. Uh, it stores data and you can store different types of data. So you can store stories, you can store comments. These are called collections. And uh, the stories are basically just a list of a ton of stories and each individual story is called a document. So one story document might look like an ID and content. And then one comment document might look like an ID, then a parent, and then content. So yeah, we're not using data.txt anymore. We're not just using a text file, none of that. Instead, we're using MongoDB. MongoDB and the database management system is called Mongoose, uh, if you're curious. Not too important to remember the names, but MongoDB fixes everything. Now everything works because we're storing everything in MongoDB, our database. Everything's fixed. Uh, except uh, wherever MongoDB is, you can take a baseball bat and smash right through it and you would still lose all your data. That is the problem. So how to fix that is you put it on the internet, you put it in the cloud, and then this way, uh, this way no one can delete all your data because it's on the cloud. So that's what Atlas is. Uh, the setup was an Atlas. You made like an account on Atlas. And that's so that no one can take a baseball bat and slam through your MongoDB because it's on a website, it's in the cloud. So yeah, how it works is you have your backend and your backend will sometimes go to the warehouse, which is MongoDB on Atlas and get stuff. And Atlas does cool things like it stores your data in three different places so that when one dies, uh, you still have it in other places, but not that important. But I'm gonna do a little demo. I'm gonna show you guys Catbook data on Atlas. So let's open that up. This is how Atlas will look like. You have your databases here. You'll have only one database probably. Uh, and you'll have different collections. So the comments collection is here and the stories collection is here. And let's see the comments collection. Uh, loading documents. And you can see all of the comments on Catbook. Hi, this is a comment. It has a parent, has a creator name, anonymous, it has an ID. You can scroll through all of them. And then there's more results next. You can like filter. So if I want to see all the comments by this user, I'm going to say parent is that user, apply. I guess this user only made one comment, but. Oh no, it says one of many. Wow, okay, they made another comment. Yeah, so. That's how Atlas looks like. You'll be using Atlas for your projects and we'll be using it in the next workshop. So to recap what's happening in our diagram from earlier, now we sort of stories in the database. So when we post a new story, the server goes to the database and says, add this story into the warehouse add the story into the database and on Atlas story shows up and we add our new story to the database, to the stories collection. And then we say, okay, we're done. And now if another client from across the world wants to get all the stories, then the server says, okay, let's go to the warehouse again, get back all the stories it returns a list of all the stories and then we send that back to the person from across the world and all of our data is safe and secure on atlas mongodb atlas uh, in the database amazing so yeah to summarize uh all databases are is rather than storing our data on the server in a variable 
or in a text file. We just store everything in a database. Uh, and we're going to use MongoDB, and it's going to be in the cloud on Atlas, uh, which you guys all made accounts for. So later today, we'll be doing a workshop with writing code. For a quick little sneak peek on what the code for things is going to look like, uh, I don't know if you guys remember seeing the story and comment collections in MongoDB Atlas. Uh, but uh, what we'll do is we'll define the collections. So for each collection, we'll define a schema where we say what the fields are for that collection. So we say the stories have a creator name and they have content. And then the comments have a creator name, a parent, and then they have content. And then what we'll do, uh, this is all a sneak peek. So we'll say all this later too. So you don't have to remember this, but what we will do is in our uh, instructions in the server, when we say how to get all the stories, we'll, we'll hop over to the warehouse and ask MongoDB to find all the stories. This highlighted uh, code is uh, functions from our DBMS. It's, uh, our function that gets all the stories from MongoDB. So you can think of it as someone hopping into their car, driving over to the warehouse and getting all the stories and then driving back. And then since it takes time, we have to use the dot then. And then once we get the stories back, you just send all of them back to the user. And this is a little sneak peek on how we're gonna add data to the warehouse. We're just gonna use the dot save function and this will save our new story into MongoDB. So it's the same as someone driving in their car to the warehouse, adding the story, and then coming back. But yeah, uh, good luck in workshop six, which will be after lunch. Please, please, please ask questions if you're lost. And it's very normal to be lost. And we can definitely try helping one-on-one -on, -one on uh, the help queue. Or even after class on weblab.2 slash Q, we added some extra office hours today right after class from three to four. So feel free to come to that. And outside of class, if you still need help, please ask on Piazza and we'll get back to you on average within a minute. So that is very quick. And you don't need to know what you're confused about. Just ask for help. But yeah. Thanks for listening. Have fun at lunch and see you guys at 1245.